Thanks for getting slides up. Hi folks, I am Chris Swan. Uh, some of you will know me from various meetings beforehand and normally trying to get along to the Oshag uh, events. And at a previous event in 2018, I talked about a, a project that I built uh, to have a Raspberry Pi controlled uh, sous vide water bath uh, for cooking. So what I'm going to talk about today is keeping that project going. Uh, and so this is 3,126 days later uh, from when I created the thing back at the end of March in 2013 uh, when Raspberry Pi was uh, a relatively new thing. Uh, can I ask anyone who's not the speaker to mute out? I suspect, Paolo, it could be you. Yeah. Um, I, Julian will. Oh, okay. Um, someone will go around and mute out anyone who's not. It's a bit of a way of turning down the speaker behind us. Uh, what if I talk a bit more softly, like that? Is that like that? I think it's the loop on your side because we are all muted. We just do a little hardware engineering here. Is that better? Okay, let's see that. Oh, yeah. All right. So, it's too bad. I'll go get a program. I came across this quote the other day, which I think uh, really sums up the experience. Creating something new is easy, creating something that lasts is the challenge. So, some stats. Uh, it's been eight years, six months, and 21 days since I uh, originally created this thing. Uh, so that's 446 weeks. And I keep a log every time I use it. Uh, and so the log files have piled up to 228. Uh, so that means I've been using it approximately once every two weeks. Um, those uses will generally be one meal going through it, but there have been times when it's been used for a lunch and then used again the same day for a dinner. Uh, in terms of failures, uh, one dead DS18 V20. I think, mean, Andy, you're talking about the various vagaries of those things later on. Uh, one dead SD card. Uh, SD cards have an atrocious failure rate, it seems, particularly in Raspberry Pis. A multitude of dead RF sockets. Uh, I think in terms of failure, that's the thing that's failed the most. Uh, but still pretty much the same code. Uh, and so the, if we were to look back at the code in GitHub, uh, it's still recognizably uh, the, the same chunk of code as it was in the first place, even though things have had to be tweaked over the years. So getting into a bit more detail on the hardware, uh, there's really sort of three components to this. So there's the Raspberry Pi as the control system. So that's using its uh, immersible temperature sensor uh, in order to read the temperature of the water. Uh, and then uh, from that, uh, it's running a, a long duration pulse width modulation uh, to turn the uh, heating element in the crock pot on and off. It does that through uh, RF encoding to an RF activated um, remote controlled socket. Um, and so the Pi itself, the Wi Fi, the, um, the little slice of Pi, uh, Pi hat, and the RF components, they've all stayed exactly the same. Um, they've lived up to the task for years and years on end. Uh, the, Temperature, probe, and the main problem with those is not just failure of the probes themselves. Uh, I've had one that has basically just been boiled to death over the years. Uh, but actually, the connector is coming away. Uh, and so over the years, I've 
um, applied a bit more sort of heavy handed soldering and a bit of heat shrink to try and hold those together. Uh, but that's probably the most fragile part of the whole setup. Uh, the component that's failed most often is the RF controlled uh, sockets. Uh, these things, it would seem, just don't like being cycled all that much. Uh, and so, you know, early days I was using Macklin parts. Uh, and Macklin managed to just go out of business in time for me to not be able to get any more of those. Um, so that involved then switching over to completely different parts and having to re engineer around uh, the different RF uh, remote controls that they need. The crop pot that I started out with was falling apart. And uh, you can see some blue Subaru uh, around the control of the crop pot. Uh, and that had actually stood up to eight and a half years of uh, much more use than it ever got before it was a sous vide water bath. Uh, and so it was a little bit on its last legs uh, and still is, but still holding up. So hopefully another eight and a half years uh, before I need to buy another one of those. Um, software wise, the Raspbian operating system has had to be upgraded a few times as uh, I've just kind of followed the releases of that. Um, often it needed to be upgraded because uh, key dependencies uh, have required later versions of the operating system to be available in package managers. So when new um, RF sockets came along, I had to switch from a library called Rugby Strong on and off um, to Pylite, uh, and then Pylite itself had uh, underlying dependencies that, that needed to be caught up to date. Uh, early days with the software, I did a very naive PID controller, uh, quickly kind of realized that that needed to uh, be biased um, in order to kind of ramp into the temperatures that I was using. Um, and that version lived for quite a long while uh, until a recent rewrite from Python 2 to Python 3. Um, so when I began this thing, Python 3 was kind of just new on the scene, but not really. Um, the default in any of the distros. And of course, now Python 2 uh, has passed its end of life, and Python 3 has become the default in its wake. Uh, and the rewrite to Python 3 was fairly straightforward. I just ran the code through a conversion tool, uh, so there was very little manual effort uh, involved in, in working with that. So that was all I had to say. It is after all a lightning talk. So thanks for your time. I'm happy to uh, answer any questions while we're getting set up for the next speaker. Thank you very much, Chris. And another question from Andy. Ask away, Andy. So in your photo, the Raspberry Pi is um, not got any enclosure. So is, is that how is that how you have it in your kitchen on the side like that, and it's managed to survive? It, so it, it has been in an enclosure um, pretty much since that photo was taken. Uh, the enclosure that I used was a cheap um, machine cut perspex one from eBay. Um, the captures on that failed startlingly quickly, and it's now held together by some discarded hairbands. Uh, but it, it keeps the dirt and grease off the pie itself, and it's you know, been sufficient. And when you have failures, like you use it like every couple of weeks, it seems so. But when you have failures, it's is that frustrating, or do you always have spare parts ready to go, or uh, just kind of change your plans? So the, the most common failure being the soldering on the temperature probes and the, the connectors there. That's normally just a quick dab of solder and get it going again. Uh, the most annoying failures have been the RF sockets, especially when I thought that I had a spare and then you know, sort of hunt through the loft to try and find the spare and don't, and then order some more online, and then months later, it's kind of, oh yeah, that's where it was. Um, I think there's only twice that I've wanted to use it and sort of encountered an issue of not being able to use it at the time that I wanted to. So, yeah, not bad reliability over the years. Um, question from Daniel Broomhead, of course, he's too young to remember the original talk. <laughs> as our early career advocate. Um, so what inspired the project uh, was the, the O'Reilly book, Cooking for Geeks. 
and there's a whole sort of chapter in there about um, precision temperature control cooking. Um, and then that led me to you know, reading blogs of people who made sous vide water baths that were making use of Arduinos. And um, then the Raspberry Pi kind of came on the scene, and I wanted to make something as a sort of physical compute project with the Pi. Uh, in terms of how long it took to implement, uh, it was probably rattling around in my head for a few weeks as I figured out how I was going to do it. But putting the whole thing together once I'd done that uh, was an afternoon's work. So the initial implementation of it uh, took a few hours on a Sunday afternoon and then put it up on my blog. Um, Seven is asking, when was your previous talk on the project? It hasn't been eight years. No, so the previous talk was in 2018. Um, and so at that point, the project had already been going for five years. Uh, but that was before I had to do the uh, Python 3 rewrite. Okay. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, 